Project. 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 Welcome to the Project Project, the podcast with a mission to cover every project throughout pop culture and history. I'm Sam. And I'm Lewis. And this week we watched the Ugly Betty episode, Manhattan Project. Yep, the third part of our Manhattan Project project where we watch stuff called the Manhattan Project and build up to Oppenheimer. Yeah. So we uh, we did the King of Queens, first yeah, of all. we did. And what did we learn from that, Sam? Uh, so from that we learned that Manhattan is a place and it's in New York City. Yes, we did. Very informative that. Um, we then watched the 1986 film, The Manhattan Project, which didn't learn much more, but was close, more closely related. Yeah. It was about building a nuclear we bomb. We learned, yeah, certain things about nuclear bomb b- building, and we learned about plutonium and that a little bit. Yeah, and from the trivia, we learned that the first test of the nuclear bomb was on the 15th of July, 1945. Yeah, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> it was around then, yeah, 14th or 15th. Yeah, yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. So, so we're building up our knowledge. I mm. don't know if it's going to be added too much here with... Ugly Betty. Yeah, I can't remember. I only watched it yesterday, so we'll have to find out. Yes. But But before any of that, (laughs) if you want to skip ahead, we've got time codes in the episode description. uh, So you can skip straight to our coverage of Ugly Betty or to personal projects, where I think we're both going to be talking about Black Mirror Season 6. Yes, I also have been to the cinema multiple times this week. Ooh, ooh la la. But yeah, before that, how are you today, Lewis? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, back to work today. I had mm-hmm. a few days off because it was my birthday this week. Yeah. Um, and I'm flying to Scotland on Sunday, so I've got <laughs> two days when I need to squeeze like two weeks worth of work in. Yep. A very busy time of the year for my work, so been very very Sounds busy i was fun. gonna have to stay late at work but then i remembered that we need to do this <laughs> so i'm gonna have to stay late tomorrow oh, instead no. on a friday on a night. friday so yeah i'm pretty good you know i had a <laughs> had a nice few days yeah, off yeah. um but busy today yeah how are you I'm okay. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, I don't really have much to talk about, really. But yeah, work's been pretty busy for me as well. Didn't have quite as much time as you off, but I did have a little bit of time off long weekend when I was planning on being at Glastonbury (laughs) prior to not getting tickets and then just kept the time off. I saw a a compilation on TikTok. It might actually have been the official Glastonbury TikTok page. That was comparing how British artists say Glastonbury to how American artists <laughs> yeah, say yeah. Glastonbury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, hello, Glastonbury. <laughs> yeah, there's a few. I remember the few times I've seen Haim, the sister act. <laughs> <laughs> um, they they always really go into that. And I think it's intentional at this point. It's like, you know that you can say it different to that. Hello, yeah. Glastonbury. <laughs> it's not even like that, is it, really? But, no. No. but yeah, I'm all right. I haven't got much to say. So uh, speaking of things to say, what's the uh, first segment where we say some things? I think you probably mean... Project News! Yes, that is uh, the one, yeah. We had the one with the cool little bass line. <laughs> As always, I've Googled the word project and seen what news come up. Bit of a slow week this week. There is always constant um, reviews from American news stuff doing the latest Lazarus Project episode okay, because that yeah. is still, I think it's four episodes out in America so far. Oh, lucky Seem them. to be getting good reviews. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this one is from The Daily Record. Oh. And it just kind of made me laugh a bit. <laughs> um, so it's Harry and Meghan's next project set to be Charles Dickens' inspired TV show. Right, okay, okay. So... Obviously, Harry and Meghan love doing as much media as they can since deciding they want to be out the spotlight recently. Yeah. Um, they recently had their <laughs> Spotify podcast cancelled. Right, did they? Yeah. The, Don't know anything yeah, about that. Apparently no. it won awards and was very good, but... Uh, can't have been that good. Cancelled after one season. Um, and they're now doing a new Netflix show mm. um, inspired by Charles Dickens's <laughs> novel, Great Expectations. Okay. Now, can you think, possibly <laughs> a better group of people yeah. to do an adaptation yeah. about poverty in the Victorian era ah. than members of the royal family in the 21st century. Yeah, I, just, I think they're a perfect fit, to be they, honest. They, they, yeah, they yeah. must be, what, yeah. What would, uh, what would little old Harry know about living up in poverty? Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. And Megan, who I don't know much about her, but she seems to have had a pretty good life, adult life at least, you know. Uh, upper class American. Yeah, yeah, you'd imagine. Um, on, unsurprisingly, yeah. it's going to be centred around uh, Miss Havisham, 
because okay. as, but, so this is going to be a bit of a dig at his mum then is it? <laughs> his grandma sorry well possibly <laughs> but um yeah i mean there's not much to say about this i just yeah, thought yeah. it's really funny the idea firstly yeah, that, that they that's, they still keep producing more stuff they just can't stop yeah yeah like You'd think they're working for Disney or something. Yeah, the yeah. fact they keep doing stuff. But also, of all things, Great Expectations is just such a funny choice for them yeah, to do. How weird. Like, maybe if it was and like. It's one that gets a lot of adaptations as well. There was a BBC one like last year. Yeah. It's, with like, I think Olivia Coleman was Miss Havisham. Yeah, it's like, what what is there left to say? Apparently, mm. it, they have got fresh ideas. Oh, yeah. And stuff. <laughs> But like where Miss Havisham's the good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it must be like it's like their version of the uh, dark Disney reboots. Instead of Maleficent, it's ha Havisham. <laughs> yeah, Havisham. You know, it might actually be it that. It could be Havisham. That would be so funny. Uh, it's, it's actually the the dirty poor boy that's the villain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but bloody hell. Just maybe off. Um. So it's it's going to be called Bad Manners. Oh no. Okay. Not not Havisham, but bad manners maybe focusing on how rude and entitled this poor little yes, orphan boy yes. is oh how dare he ask for some money <laughs> uh but yeah it's just very funny and i, I, I saw... can't believe people will keep paying them to do this no stuff. no i think i saw great expectations at the uh brighton dome for a school trip one time yeah it's the sort of thing you do on a school trip. Yeah, yeah. i'm not sure i've ever seen any adaptation of great expectations it's, it's not my favorite it's I don't know if I've got a favourite, to be honest, but it's not my favourite. Uh, a Christmas Carol is yeah, the yeah, easy, it's probably easy my option. Favorite. Anyone with a Muppet in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, a Muppet's Christmas Carol is something. Yeah, yeah. I think one thing that I always loved about Muppet's Christmas Carol <laughs> is how seriously yeah, Michael yeah. Caine plays it. <laughs> like He thinks he's doing... Like, he pretends he's doing yeah. a full-on full like, on. Dixian adaptation yeah, yeah. and doesn't at all question it. But yeah, good, yeah, maybe this will be the new Muppets Christmas Carol. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe there are Muppets in it. We don't know that for sure. We don't know for sure. Bad manners. <laughs> then there might be Muppets making it though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Netflix off. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, that is the project news, which means we can go into our main topic, which is Ugly Betty. Manhattan. Definitely projects. not the Mindy project, as we both thought it was. Yeah, we had a bit of a mix up there, which I think may have been my fault. Um, uh, where <laughs> on the uh, mega document that we've got, I have wrote down Mindy Project and yeah. we were under the belief it was until we both went to watch it. <laughs> and I, I messaged Lewis and said, I'm really struggling to find this. <laughs> went on the episode titles because when you search it, it comes up with an episode where she wants to get a job placement at a prestigious Manhattan yeah, and it's got project in the name. It's got project, so I think those two kind of come up. But yeah, it's not that at all. It's no, Ugly it's Betty. Ugly Betty, which I didn't really know much about mm. and wish I had not Okay. Um, <laughs> season three, episode one, yep. Manhattan Project, released in 2008. Yeah. Uh, before we go into the background stuff, who's this for? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not necessarily for us, if that's what you're asking. No, it's not. I mean, I, it, was a, it was a popular show. It used to be on E4, I think, in the UK. Yeah. I don't know if they aired the full lot. I imagine they probably got to season three because it was probably still popular at this point. I don't know how many there are, five or something like that. I think it's four seasons. Four. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because it's definitely at the point in this, it's, it's a classic us thing where the episode that we cover is the one where the status quo is like upheaved and then yeah. everything's different and the whole point is like look how different it is this episode and we're like okay cool. <laughs> but yeah, yeah like i mean i know people i think amy was a fan of it when she was a bit younger i, I yeah. imagine it's in my more, head more female oriented potentially. yeah in my head i think part of the reason we got it mixed up with the mini project yeah. is that i think both those shows I see in a similar kind of They're way both coming out around similar times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and it's it, it's actually um, Amy was watching a bit of um, Jane the Virgin, which is another thing which is around the similar time. And the family dynamic is is comparable with this. And right, and it's that. it's also that kind of genre which has kind of consistently been happening for the last fifteen years of working in fashion in some way, either at yeah, a yeah. designer or in this, like a magazine, because this was probably around the same time as like The Devil Wears it Prada. It feels very much like that. I and think then, this is off the back of that. Really, yeah, and then it? even yeah. like recently on Netflix, you've had Emily in Paris, which yeah. is a similar sort of concept of young woman working in fashion, 
but this time in Paris and it's kind of a more modern take and it's there's that whole genre of films and TV that people yeah. like so if it, it's probably yeah I mean just doing a quick Google here people around 2006 2007 were making the comparisons with Devil Wears Prada when it first came out so it yeah. was obviously seen as a bit of a you know spiritual kind of success to that yeah world, although right? obviously this was this isn't an original series it was right. did you know okay. this no, no, it I was based know. on a Colombian uh, TV show okay, okay. that ran from 99 to 2001 okay. called Yo Soy Betty La Fia, which okay. is like I'm Betty I'm, So I'm, Ugly or something like that. Betty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's not an original fair, idea. Fair. So, so in a way, Devil Wears Prada may have ripped off that one. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah but uh, the person who did adapt it for uh, American TV yeah. was Silvio Horta. Okay. Um, this is their only real notable credit. I think they were... I think they're Puerto Rican or okay, yeah, yeah. maybe Latin American. I yeah, can't yeah, remember yeah. exactly. Uh, but this is their biggest thing. This episode specifically was directed by Victor Nelly Jr., who okay. has done quite a lot of stuff. He, he's did episodes of The Office, The American mm-hmm. Office, uh, the American version of Wilfred, you know, oh, yeah, the one yeah. with the dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the imaginary friend or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, he's done Community, he's done Gilmore Girls, cool. he's done My Name is Earl, Scrubs yeah, and Brooklyn yeah. Nine-Nine. Yeah, I mean, a lot of those are exactly this kind of era, this kind of vibe, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. He, he gets consistent work directing cool. TV shows. Um, in it, uh, the, the lead actress playing Betty Suarez mm. is America Ferreira, yes, yeah. who I only really know for this. Yeah, um, she did some other films after this yeah she's she was in how to train your dragon as a voice role she's also gonna be in barbie apparently not as a barbie yeah as gloria okay guess we'll find out fair enough okay yeah it is that classic thing particularly in this era as well where it's like oh this character is so ugly and it's like oh you take their glasses off or take their hair down it's just like an, an attractive actress yeah i think with this they're even trying to do the thing of she's never going to do that because this is who she is. I imagine yeah. there are probably makeover scenes, but she she goes back to her kind of look either way. It's yeah. three seasons in. She, she like, just likes the way that like she dresses. America Forever is fairly I, attractive. Yeah, they just yeah. stuck braces and glasses. I think calling it Ugly up. Betty is a little bit like problematic in a it way. Is I like... mean, there's there's a couple other problematic bits in this episode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've also got Eric uh, Mabius, who plays Daniel Mead, yes. who's like her boss. Yeah. He's been in the OC, CSI right. Miami. Yeah, yeah. He's also well in the Hallmark uh, series and stuff. He's, oh, made, yeah. he's made two Hallmark um, Christmas films. Right. He was also in a TV show called Sign Sealed Delivered. <laughs> Um, which then produced 12 films in the last uh, 10 years. So he is all about that Hallmark money at the yeah, moment. Yeah, fair enough. We've covered a Hallmark film, uh-huh. uh, Project Christmas Wish. Yes, and it was not good. It wasn't good. But yeah, he's getting all that Hallmark money, mm. which is its own genre in itself. <laughs> the Hallmark Project maybe on the cards in the future. <laughs> Uh, we've also got uh, Vanessa Williams, who plays Wilhelmina Slater, yes. who's like the boss. Who's yeah, she's the kind of... Um, the devil who devil. wears Prada. Yeah, what's she called? <laughs> um, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. <laughs> yeah, she's the Meryl Streep character. Uh, she was in the Hon- Hannah Montana movie. She's okay. also been in the Mindy Project. A couple ah. of episodes, so connection there. Uh, she's been in Modern Family, and she's also been on Project Runway. So she's got Fair. three project uh, credits. Yeah. So she has potential to become part of the <laughs> alumni in the future. Uh, we've got Tony Plana, who plays Ignacio Suarez, yep. Betty's dad. I recognised him from something. I yeah. recognised him, but probably not from something you've oh, seen. Okay, yeah. So he was in 24. Okay, yeah. Um, he's 24. been in Desperate Housewives. Uh, he I was in, seen him in that. Actually. He was in The Punisher. He was uh, a CIA agent guy who eventually works with The Punisher to take down... I don't think I watched much of Punisher. Ben Barnes. Yes. In that. Saw. Yeah. yeah, I knew that much, but um, I haven't seen it. But I recognised him from the film Goal, where okay, he no. plays <laughs> the father of the main character, okay. and he's he's all like, don't go and play soccer, you need to do your studying, but then eventually flies to Newcastle and watches him play and then dies, and it's... Oh, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I've talked about Goal on this a few months yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm sure you have, yeah. I think someone else popped up on Goal as well. Yeah. Is I'll... it the guy who played Julius Caesar? Was he in Goal? Yeah, no, uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> It's also, I think there was two things in a row that were. There's also the guy that plays Stannis Baratheon is in gold yes, as well. Yes, yes. 
Um, we've also got Anna Ortiz, who plays Hilda Suarez, yes. the older sister. Hasn't got many credits, but was also in the Mindy Project. Oh. <laughs> so doing that project stuff, getting that project money in. Yeah. Uh, we've got Ashley Jensen or Jensen, who mm. plays Christina McKinney, the Scottish friend who's got like one scene in this. Yes, who is in Extras with Ricky Gervais. Yes, yes. which what I recognise her from because yes, yes. Extras is great. She I think all... this was her big kind of American breakout following yeah, stuff like following Extras. extras yeah. yeah, she was also in Nativity, which was I a good, awful those. film. Yeah. <laughs> Also in House Train Your Dragon with okay. um, America Ferreira. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's also was in Romeo and Juliet and the sequel Sherlock Gnomes. I've seen a little bit of the first one. Uh, they're both great. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Amy likes though. I haven't seen. Yeah, them. and she's in EastEnders for it because she's a British actress. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, we've also got two bigger names left: uh, Rebecca Romijn. Yes. Um, who's Alexis Me? Alexis, yeah. Who's um, Daniel's sister? Yeah. Yes, who obviously. Played Mystique in the yes, original X Men yes, films. She did. Yeah, in the first three. Um, she's also in The Punisher as well. Oh, is she? Okay. Um, she's voiced Lois Lane multiple times in animated enough, stuff, which I thought was interesting. Also been on Project Runway. Yeah, <laughs> so makes sense. Yeah. Lots of crossover. I think she was a bit of a supermodel in for a period or at yeah. least a model. Yeah, uh, yeah. She's done a couple of episodes of Adventure Time as well, which really? surprised me. Oh, cool. cool. Um, and the other thing, apart from the Steve, that I mainly recognise her for is that she's in Star Trek Discovery and the newer series Strange New Worlds. Really? Oh, cool. Where cool. she's like the the Spock equivalent on that enterprise. Fair enough. She, her okay. character is just number one. Okay. <laughs> where she plays the secondary lead right, okay, to uh, okay. Christopher Pike. Yes. Um, and she's good fun in that. Yeah, she's she seems got, to be. She's got dark hair in yeah. that, so I didn't immediately recognise her. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then finally is Lindsay Lohan yeah. appears in this as Kimmy Keegan. Yeah. Um, Lindsay Lohan, probably the most famous person on this list. Yeah. Um, I, I imagine she's a series regular for at least the first part of this. I have some trivia on okay. that. <laughs> uh, the Parent Trap, Freak Friday, Mean Girls, yeah. Herbie, yeah. Also, Project Runway. <laughs> of course. Wow. We can really knock them all off on this. Yeah, yeah. So we've got three Project Runways and two Mindy Projects. Well, now we know this. which Project Runway episodes to watch, don't we? <laughs> yeah, Just exactly. Find the ones I was thinking that if, if they're like in the same episode as well, I mean, that'd, that'd be, be great. great. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that <laughs> it would make is... sense if there was an Ugly Betty themed episode yeah. while this was big. Yeah, but then you don't have three guest judges on something normally, do you? We have a couple. I don't know how Project Runway is like this up. We'll find out one day. Yeah, that is the cast. The uh, description for this episode was: Betty makes a decision about what to do with her life. Ignacio gets a new job. Wilhelmina's manipulations force Daniel into making changes of his own. Wilhelmina and Alexis appear on live with Regis and Kelly to promote the new <laughs> issue of Mode. Wow, so it's just everything that happens pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Apart it's... from like his new magazine thing. That doesn't... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like 40 minutes long as yeah, well. Yeah. I thought it was going to be lot. 20 minutes. Yeah, there's quite a lot in this, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's the start of a season, so you'd think it would be a good place to jump in. But the previously on was just uh, like... So long. <laughs> it was crazy. I wrote down stuff I could remember. Did yeah. you want to talk about it overall beforehand? And, uh, and before that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want you to tell me what the IMDb rating for the series and the <sighs> episode are. Okay, I've I've learned something that it's probably I'm going to say series uh, seven point two. Interesting. Yeah, six point seven point okay. five off. You, uh, I've slipped slightly. You're slipping. Um, I don't imagine people love this episode, so I'm just gonna. Well, I'll go with the same as I'll go with the six. Was it six point six? Six point seven was the series. I'll go with six point six. Okay, well, the episode is seven point four. You haven't quite learned yet that episodes tend to be rated higher than series. I <laughs> have no idea how it works. But I forget <laughs> as soon as we stop talking about it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, let's, let's talk about generally before because yeah. I wasn't really looking forward to watching this, <laughs> and it was a bit of a painful watch. I felt. Yeah. Like. It is, I mean, I'm not the target audience and there's bits yeah. I was just kind of cringing about. And I, I've always, I think even when it was on, I thought the whole premise of Ugly Betty is just yeah. a bit like, that's a bit mean, I isn't it? I think if you get past like the title of it, like the the idea of it being her trying to make her own imprint on this kind of superficial world. Yeah. I can see kind of what they were going for there. I quite like the little family dynamic and stuff, even though 
you don't really see that much of it in this and they're kind of just being annoying but like overall it definitely feels like the kind of rom-coms of the time just made yeah. into a tv show yeah all the characters are fairly two-dimensional yeah yeah at least, from, at least from what we see in this yeah. yeah and even like the general plot considering it's 44 minutes they kind of Put, it's almost it could be like half of a film you know yeah you had this be concluded in the second half of a film you could have a 90 minute film here they squeeze a lot in. Be, yeah yeah which made it kind of hard to to make notes about because it's constant whether it's like jokes or like exposition especially the first half is a lot of like yeah. here's what's changed and here's everything that's going it on does a bit, i was kind of expecting more of just like narration of betty being like yeah. so i was doing this and i thought <laughs> this kind of like yeah. exposition -y stuff yeah. but it kind of doesn't lean too heavily in that no, and just kind of constantly it's shows a lot you. of just chatty people telling her stuff yeah it's it's odd in a way that like it's heavy on the dialogue mm. but also most of it is like quite visual stuff yeah, like yeah. what you like the developments of mm. stuff like whether it's her magazine or her new apartment or the gag with her doing the magazine shoot yeah. it's all kind of visual stuff like yeah. you could probably watch this on yeah. silent and still get the gist of what's happening I mean, in the maybe episode. that's an intentional thing i don't know is in like i'm thinking of like if it was an original colombian um series maybe like you could watch that and not necessarily understand spanish and kind of get the gist yeah. a bit like the kind of telenovela kind of vibes which is i guess kind of what they're sending yeah. for here but yeah i mean yeah i i, I didn't like hate it at all it's, i think i liked it more than you from the sounds of it yeah i did kind of hate it <laughs> i was kind of i would have preferred it to be shorter just because then i feel like i could have kind of settled into it and just enjoyed it because the, it's because it's the start of a series as well like the first like three or four scenes were just like here's everything that's happened and here's what's going on and yeah. i was just like I, I felt the need to write down a lot of stuff, even it, though I don't think a lot of it really mattered for that episode. In a way, I quite appreciated it being the first episode because yeah. it was like you kind of meeting the characters the first time again, and they're all kind of yeah. in the place where you should know them yeah. sort of thing. So it much, kind of helped yeah, you get yeah. to know well, the characters At least characters I guess the place they'll be for the first half of this season or whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah, no, I agree with that. I think it was more, I was kind of like, oh, I need to write down stuff so that I can talk about it but most of it isn't stuff that pays off in this episode so i feel like in that sense i kind of skim through a lot of stuff like all yeah. the previously on stuff isn't really related to I, it at all. i wrote stuff down on that but yeah. i was like the only so, thing that comes into it is that the sister's boyfriend is married that was the only thing that came up in this. yeah and she was decided to go, write that bit down she decided because it was like previously on someone's getting oh the guy's married there's there's quick flashes of um, like relationships and a baby yeah. and some business. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. But then it goes, it slows down the recap and goes into more yeah, detail. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit confusing. Yeah. Cause she's then like, oh, and this, this stuff also happened. And there's a whole thing at like a softball game where she yeah. rejected two guys. She or was something. proposed to have said no, but then said no to the other guy yeah. that was also interested. And th that all kind of comes to, oh, and the new uh, Wilhelmine is in charge of the magazine. She gets rid of Daniel. So that's where yeah. this starts and then she's like i want to go have fun and live my life so she goes traveling for like a month yeah i thought this was the intro Me to the too. show i was like this <laughs> intro is cool and then it kind of changes into the photos and you can see that she's looking at the photos and yeah and i was like, oh, I, was, like I still wasn't sure whether that's the intro yeah, or not yeah. but i then... think normally it just comes up with just ugly betty i quite yeah. liked it it's like the roam around the roam around the world or whatever. yeah, I was like, yeah it's pretty fun. so yeah she's we'll, we'll go into it she's talking to her family about yeah. the holiday and she's she's kind of been inspired by a holiday she's got lots of ideas for yeah. mode magazine she's where got she the works. classic big binder that's like the uh moniker or the um what is it from brooklyn 99 uh, uh amy yeah santiago yeah yeah it's that kind of vibe where she's got a... yeah she, she she's got a plan and yeah. like she she wants to get more responsibility so yeah. she can get a promotion she doesn't want to have any romance yeah at all because of what happened the last season yeah, yeah, yeah. and she wants to get her own apartment yes and they're kind of unsure about yeah. it and the dad kind of he's also got a new job he's got a new job at this burger place and uh 
yeah, he he kind of talks to her and he's, he, he's unhappy about her moving out because he worries about her. But he's also yeah. like, you're naive to think you can just go out and do this. And she's like, yeah. I'm not naive. <laughs> There's a... Yeah, they, she like storms off when they're. T- There's a funny bit here. I think it might be later on where, or maybe when she's talking to her dad, where she's yeah. like, "I've got savings. I can go live in Manhattan." Yeah, and I'm like, if you depend on savings to like move in, like you've still got to pay week to week rent. Like well, that's what I was confused about because savings aren't enough. You need to be earning enough. I thought I for a moment thought that she bought the apartment outright, and I was like, how much she saved up? I mean. If she's working for a big magazine, she could be making money, but yeah. she's an assistant. And she's also just been traveling for like three months. Yeah, so she would have spent a lot of her, yeah. yeah. I think it was only a month, she says, but okay. it seems like she got a lot done in Europe. So, But yeah, yeah I mean, you're not earning and no. you're spending all your money. Well, but... she obviously makes bad decisions, doesn't <laughs> she? Yeah, of... but Ignacio goes to work and Lindsay Lohan's there. And I was like, oh, look, yes. it's Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. And um, she's like, hey, you're not on the fryer today. You have to go do the toilets. And he's like, but I'm supposed to be on the fryer. She's like, no. He's like, I'm the best fryer in yeah. town. <laughs> and, and it turns out he is. Yeah, Betty goes to work and the first thing she notices is it's really cold. I thought that was shivering. kind of funny. It's like a frosty atmosphere return to yeah. work kind of thing. <laughs> Um, and a woman called Amanda is really excited to see her. Yeah, so I think this, so based on stuff I've seen before, so Amanda is the receptionist and there's Mark who is the very kind of camp. Um, yeah. I think he's the assistant to Wilhelmina and right. normally I think they bully her a lot. So yeah. Because that's the vibe from this. I got that. They're like you. overly friendly and she's like, why are you being so and nice she's to all me? She's confused. And they say that Wilhelmina likes it cold. That's why it's yeah, cold in here. To keep people sharp. And then they saying. like hear some footsteps and everyone panics and yeah, runs Yeah, and off. Mark says like the exact shoe that it is. He's like, there's only one person who wears yeah. those. And it's kind of like, oh, it's not a nice environment to work yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think all that was quite fun. It's just like, it's classic Devil's we- Devil Wears Prada kind yeah. of vibes, isn't it? There, she yeah. goes into a room that used to be David's office, I think. Daniel, and it, yeah. Daniel's office, and it's like a baby room. It's like a weird, creepy, like Tim Burton monochrome nursery. Yeah. And as she's like looking around, suddenly the wall gets bashed in, and <laughs> yeah. it's Wilhelmina with like a hammer, and she's like, this is where the window needs to be so that yeah. my baby can get light or whatever. And she's like, where's Daniel? <laughs> like, that's what works. Yeah, and she's yeah. like he doesn't work here anymore she's the editor-in-chief now yes i don't know what her job was before but i'm not sure no it's a it's a weird situation because this so daniel and the sister and then their mum is the older blonde woman yeah. who has the new magazine hot flush hot yeah. flash hot flash i hot think hot flash yeah but i guess for some reason, because of previous events, Wilhelmina's now in charge and maybe owns the most shares or something Yeah, I like think that. they're all owned by the same company or something. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's like Alexis who yeah. owns it all or maybe. runs it all. But then I don't know why Daniel would have been... I guess he wanted to leave, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Who knows? Um, Someone write in and tell us what happens. Yeah, but she goes downstairs and it's Player Magazine. Yeah, and it's like very like early noughties. It's like, party zone. It's, it's funky music. There's like lads and like hot girls it's around. It's like a college party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then we get the actual intro and I was like, oh yeah, I kind of think I knew this was what the right, intro okay, was. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Daniel is in charge of Player Magazine now. Yeah, um, and it's more relaxed, and he says it's it's much better. It's like a lads mag, isn't yeah, it, kind of thing. and it's yeah. full of a bunch of. I idiots. feel like it would have been good to like see a bit of what they do, like kind of thing. Like maybe have some more examples of their like really stereotypical articles. I guess you yeah. get an idea straight away, but. It's not until the pitch later that you kind of, I don't know. Yeah, there's a joke here where she's like, oh, why don't you call me? And he's like, we left a load of messages. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. someone gives her like the note that had a number. And yeah. she's like, it's six letters and the letter P. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're, they're, like, they're all way dumber. And their receptionist is like a super dumb woman. Who's, yeah. Like, I guess even stupider than the one upstairs or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then she like meets everyone and they boo her. Yeah. And she's like, it, it, Daniel's like, it's all fun. They boo everyone. And then the hot girl comes over and they're all like, rah, rah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's dude, all like, a bit weird. It's really weird. And, like creepy and they're a bit doing, like, like cringy. Weird dog noises. Like not even like howling. It's more like rah. Yeah. It's very creepy. Like, I imagine if this was a real place, it would end up with a lots of 
sexual yeah, misconduct cases type things yeah although daniel seems fine but i don't know much about his character so. yeah but he's like just do whatever and she's kind of like well i wanted to work hard to get <laughs> this bit was quite funny actually this is the one joke that got me where um so the assistant uh the receptionist is called ginger and uh daniel's like you can work on whatever you want and he's like ginger Show her the lay of the land, and Ginger's like, "I was once voted lay of the land." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's a good. Joke. Yeah, it's a bit of a you know sexist joke, but you know, yeah. Um, you've got Wilhelmina walking around Mo. And she's talking about how Daniel had the magazine doing badly. That's why he was kind of yeah. going out. And she's talking to Alexis, and she wants loads of like a big ad campaign and a billboard. Yeah, and stuff. they say something like, "Alexis is like, is this the new ad campaign or the new launch for the new Harry Potter book?" And it's <laughs> like, well, this is very timely reference. Yeah, there, I think isn't it's, it? it's so expensive. Yeah, and Alexis exactly. Is yeah. Like, no, and there's she, a whole thing with the um the big uh, billboard in Times Square that is supposed to be for Hot Flash, which is their new older yeah. women magazine. And it's reserved for that. And Wilhelmina wants it as part of her budget. Um, but she's basically like, no. And Alexis is like, you're cut off from everything. Yeah. And she's like, genuinely like, oh shit. Like, what do I do now? And she goes and screams in a lift. Yes. Mark but, takes her out to the lift. So she's yeah. a big scream. Yeah. But then she's got a plan. Um, we get a quick scene with Betty talking to her Scottish friend, Christina. Yeah. So she is, I remembered from what I'd seen before. And the reason she's so hungry is because she's the surrogate mum for Wilhelmina's baby, which is not something that comes into this episode <laughs> at all. Weird. But yeah, I remember that. I'm pretty sure. Huh. Yeah. That's yeah. I wouldn't have expect I wouldn't expect those two characters to have ever met. <laughs> no, because I think she she works for them as well. She's like the cloakroom woman or something like right. that. Right. Which never comes into this episode. Okay. Yeah. Um we get a quick scene with the sister Hilda, who's just yes. had sex with some guy. Yeah, this is the married boyfriend from the yeah, previously on. His phone means a couple of times, it's wife, and he's like, I'm going to talk to her. We both know it's over. And it's like, yeah, mm, yeah, it's maybe wait until like it's actually over before you start dating this yeah, guy. Yeah, I mean, it seems from the previously on, they were at least entangled before yeah. she found out. Because so. you know what they say, once a cheater, always a cheater. That is what they say, yeah. Yeah. And. Yeah. I've always thought it's 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 weird when people like they'll they'll be with someone who's like cheated on their partner at the time, and then they'll break up with them, and they'll get together. And I always kind of like, surely you've always got some like doubt yeah, in your mind you of would like think that, wouldn't you? Yeah, like well, they cheated on their ex partner. <laughs> Why wouldn't they cheat on me? Yeah, yeah. I've never been in that situation, yeah, so I enough. can't yeah. really <laughs> comment too much. Well, you just have. <laughs> yeah. So take everything I say with a pinch of salt because probably satire <laughs> unless i'm spot on the money and then it's my actual while, opinion yeah. <laughs> um but yeah uh betty's yeah. viewing an apartment yeah and it's, it's really nice it's it's really big and she's like i want it's it it's nice bright yellow well very bright yellow and yeah. we're supposed to be like oh does she like it or not of course she likes it she likes the bright colors yeah and her friend's like oh really she's like oh the hell's a murder in yeah, here to put like off one someone. of the couple because it's an open house situation which yeah is a very stressful way of doing this because it's well as we see it gets snapped up straight away before she manages to say she wants it oh she sees there's a whole thing with a dove where, she's got a new dove necklace which is a spirit animal yeah which is another term which i don't think people use as much nowadays because yeah it's, yeah yeah and uh yeah she sees a dove land on the um the balcony window thing sale, window yeah. sale. her friend's like oh what this pigeon and she's like no it's a sign so she goes over to say to the woman technically doves are just, they white, are just pigeons. white pigeons yeah she goes over and a woman's taking it already and she's like oh no and then the woman who is the realtor real estate agent yeah. is like oh don't worry i've got another one that's in this uh in this building it's exactly the same but like it's upstairs, so it's, it's upstairs, better. It's better. It's got sexy views, she says. And she's like, oh, can I see it now? And they're like, no, it's currently occupied. Yeah. She's like, but we've got an open house tomorrow. But it gets stepped up pretty quickly. She's so like, Betty's like, just I'll take, take it. it now. And her friend's like, no, don't do that. That's and stupid. And I was like, well, that was a smart decision. <laughs> I mean, yeah and no. By the end of this episode, it's all good. So I mean, like, yeah. So, so we then see the apartment. They, they, they fix it very quickly. It's but, like yeah. a mess. There's there's a leak in the middle of a bucket. I don't know if there's a mattress up against the wall yeah. 
all the paints kind of like peeling. Yeah, there's something disgusting in the fridge. And it's just, yeah, but at the same time, it's but like it is, it is the it's clearly the same set that yeah. they've just grubbed up. Kind but of like thing. Yeah. it's. It's like give it a cleaner, yeah, and it's a big it's Manhattan massive. apartment. We don't know, like, price wise, if she's getting a good deal for it or whatever. It seems like she's put well, she said she's put all her savings yeah. into it, whether that's but like deposit and all it's that. It's probably sort of a nicer flat than Doug and Cassie move into in King of Queens. <laughs> well, we don't know if they ever moved in, did we? Yeah, the, yeah. The yeah I, would say, were, I would say it's nicer than that. I'm amazed there. I remember their names. <laughs> you started saying <laughs> names, I was going, like, who the fuck is this? But it's a nicer apartment than that, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, just one person as well. So Yeah, um, but it was like all her money and yeah. she opens a curtain and there's like a naked Oh, elderly couple. Yeah, like yeah. Just across. That's the sexy views there because she's she's like, oh, at least there's some sexy views. I don't know what she was expecting. But yeah, it wasn't and that. Hilda, who's there, is going to call Ignacio. Yes, uh, but she's like, no, no, no. I want to fix this myself because I'm a strong, independent woman now. Yes. So she convinces her not to to do that. There's a bit here that confused me. That it kind of goes on throughout where they call her Betty Swires. Suarez. Yeah. Yeah. They call her Betty Swires. And I was yeah. like, is that like a joke about her? Is that they are they just mispronouncing her name? Who what the other people? Another character. A couple of other characters. Maybe it is, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I yeah. just don't think I, I don't think I get this. Cause like it's Suarez. So yeah, it's yeah, Ignacio yeah. Suarez and Hilda Suarez. Well, uh Lindsay Lohan's character calls him the wrong name completely for the first scene so i think she's intentionally being like right, racist yeah. basically but yeah maybe that is the thing they think she's called uh like anglican Swires. kind of name yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um but anyway she, she's back at work um and she's glued to her chair yeah we didn't mention daniel's got this little kid running around who's like oh yeah 11 dj or and he's i think he's french he's is that french right? but he's daniel's son yeah because i guess he was a bit of a player and he's been given this kid last yeah. season He's in this episode. He's kind of trying to. He's a bit of a dick. <laughs> build up a bit of a relationship, but he's just letting the kid do whatever he wants. He doesn't want to be strict because, like, his dad was strict. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, she people at her work are booing her again until she gets up off the chair and she's ripped the back of her skirt. Yes, and because they can then see her underwear, they start yeah. cheering. And yeah. I was like, "This is this is making me feel a bit yeah, uncomfortable, yeah. to be honest." And then one of the main laddie lads he's like oh i like your binder i've had a look through it this thing about women on motorbikes is really cool or bikes yeah. i think it is originally they're like we like your idea but we're gonna make a pervy version yeah because we're creepy men <laughs> instead of uh because they're like we don't like old women and she's like they're only 40 and they're like boo yeah and it's like yeah instead of that it's hot girls on motorcycles going through the hottest party towns of the country yeah and they called it biker chicks of player Yes. Um yeah. and Be but Betty's been put in charge of this whole promo yeah. stuff. So she's like, Oh yeah, okay. Well Daniel's got... like, you wanted more responsibility, you know? Yeah, she's like, I guess I did. Um, we get a bit with Will Hamina's not happy with designs or something, and then Alexis comes in. Um Yeah. And she's yeah. like she like is on the phone. I don't know she if she gets actually... a guy to do a fake phone call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, oh, well, I'm going to be on this TV show. Yeah, it's this Regis Live or whatever yeah. thing. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I'll bring Alexis Mead, who's head of the magazine. Yeah, yeah. I thought this was like a joke or something. It's well, kind the, of weird. She's getting her on to like basically yeah. like show her up a little bit, but it's not an actual joke kind of thing. Yeah. It's, 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 it, it, She's basically trying to like get her. She's trying her. to undermine the new Hot Flash magazine, yeah. By getting by talking about it and finding out what people think about it live, yeah. But, but Alexis um, is really excited about being on the show and runs off. She's like, yeah, "Oh, I don't know to yeah. wear." And uh, and this is where we get one of the most dated lines of the the whole thing. I don't know if you caught this bit. <laughs> I'm going to hear it now. Uh, so after the plan works, Mark looks very happy with himself and he says, like taking candy from a tranny. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I don't know, you wouldn't have known from this. Um, Alexis is a trans woman in this show, which she. is... You know, pro quite progressive for its time, I guess. Yeah. Apart from the fact that they're now making, making... I guess, constant jokes. If it's anything to go by in this, oh, I yeah. did not. I guess no. they got Rebecca I mean, yeah, to, yeah. to play. play yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So that's um, that's that. 
That's the mm. that's the bit that stuck in my mind, as well as all the uh, lads mag stuff yeah, as well. It's, yeah. it's it is very dated because it, yes. it's only fifteen years ago. <laughs> yeah, um, but they're at the big bike event, I think. Aren't yeah, they? and uh, uh, Betty gets told by one of the biker girls that the girl with the R on her back has run off or something. Yeah, so the little brat is running around spraying silly string at people. Yeah, and Betty like makes a big deal, and they're all like, "It's fine." And then off screen, he does it to the R girl and she freaks out and goes home. Yes. And it's the classic like, I'll sort it out. And we're like, we know what's going to happen here. You're obviously going to do it. And at the same time, she's trying to sort out the landlord situation, the apartment. Yeah. And she is like, you need to fix it. Something's happened. I think she, at that point, she's like, I'll be at my apartment later for it or something like that. Yeah. Um, but we we get we're on the show um, and they're talking yeah. about hot flash. So it, that's a real show. That's the that's right. a real thing. Yeah. yeah, Regis Kelly and whatever that woman's called. I've seen her in something else. Uh, can't remember what it is. Maybe uh, Broad City. She might be in. But basically, herself, yeah. they start ripping apart this this magazine. And yeah, he's Alexis like all... old women, even though he's like fucking ancient. It's yeah. like the whole. Thing. And Alexis is all kind of feeling really awkward and uncomfortable yeah, with it all. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the editors later on's kind of like baiting her to say something negative about yeah, Hot Flash. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just kind of like it's basically mm. getting her to be like, it's not a good idea. Don't put all the budget into that and give it to me instead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, the two like bitches from Mode magazine that Billy Betty have turned up to her biker thing because they're like. They she's Betty, she's gonna something's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And as she's like revving, all the bikes have kind of lined up with P-L-A-Y-E. Yeah. Spell. And they're At first, for, uh... I thought they were going to do like, change the E to an A and have player like that. But then I guess the, if the magazine's called player, they can't really do that. Yeah, true, true. But then, yeah, just she's about to go off DJ squirts her again with silly string because yeah. this kid's a fucking menace. <laughs> um, and she Maybe drives... the D stands for Denise. <laughs> Denise the menace. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> no. Bad Sam. That's good. <laughs> uh, it's because you said Denise. <laughs> he's French. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, Denis. Uh, too many layers to this. <laughs> um, but yeah, because she's got silly squint. She, skilly, uh, she, cra- but, she basically, she, yeah. she decides to ride the bike anyway for some reason. And she's not bad. Yeah. Also, I thought the thing was going to be that she can't ride a bike yeah. because the classic thing is you get on a bike, you do it wrong and you go Fall off, off or whatever. Or it flies off, yeah. Yeah. She She's doing fine considering she can't see. She manages to wipe it off, veers into a pool of some sort of jelly or something. I think it's yeah. like a jelly wrestling situation. Yeah, probably. because... <laughs> and then she's in it and she's like oh and then actually there was a funny bit again with this uh ginger girl where earlier on she's like she says 411 911 she's getting confused about which number's the emergency one yeah and when when the, when she crashes in you can hear in the background she's like call 411 like, oh. like, that's, that's, that's okay pretty, that's pretty good uh but the two bitches from mode are all very happy that yes. this will happen and i think they're filming it or something no it's getting filmed for the tv anyway yeah, yeah. Um, so Betty's at her apartment trying to call for like a handyman again, but yeah. they're like, they're busy, call again later. And then she calls straight away after, then the offices are closed and she can't get any help. Um, and then there's a neighbor playing guitar really loudly. And yeah. she's just kind of like, oh. it's the classic, like, no, this is another thing that's annoying me. Yeah. And, and then her well, idea book's getting like dripped yeah, on. Yeah. 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 Um, and then she looks out the window, and the naked neighbors are dancing. <laughs> it's like this is bad. And then, a, and then the dove comes back and attacks her book. Yeah, it's kind of going mad. It's like really, it's just like little CG dove like there or yeah. stuck on or whatever. But it's pretty. Uh, then yeah. she she runs out and sitting by a door, and she's all sad and gets a call from Hilda, and she's yes. like. Dad's getting bullied at work. Meet me at Flushing Burger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Terrible name for a burger place. It's be- I I thought this as well, but it's I imagine it's because it's in Flushing Queens, which is an area of Queens. Right. It's still a bad name. I think that's. I the mean, point. Flushing Queens is a bad name as well, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? <laughs> the toilet of New York City. <laughs> Yeah. Or just New York. I don't know. Uh, but they're at Flashing Burger and they see that like Lindsay Lohan is giving her dad shit. And then she yeah. remembers like, oh, Lindsay Lohan was my high school bully yeah. before she was in like Mean Girls and yeah. and 
Parent Trap and stuff. She really bullied me at school. Maybe not before Parent Trap. Yeah. No, it's when they were really young. They, they, oh. she was the bully. Was she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way up to Mean Girls. She uh, was the Mean Girl at her wow. school. They really miscast her then, didn't they? Yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah. 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 I think she Maybe. must have misunderstood the casting call. You know. Yeah, probably. Like, oh, they want a Mean Girl. I'm mm. a. Mean... <laughs> Lindsay Lohan's still getting like consistent work, like doing. Like... I watched the Christmas film that she did with Netflix, and it was it was all right. Yeah, you know? like she's it, still... it was it was it was very kind of hallmark film. I might even even talked about it on the podcast to be honest around Christmas, but it was like it was fine. She's pretty good. Yeah, know? I mean, look, I, I see a lot of stuff she does is just like cameos or like voice yeah, work or yeah. stuff. But I just kind of assumed she'd have a huge gap in her filmography, but there's yeah. not really a like, gap Like, I wasn't there. surprised. I was surprised to see her in this, but I was like, this makes sense for her to turn up in this. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, if um, How Met Your Mother had been filming at this time, she would have been on that kind of thing. Yeah. They'd always get, like, Katy Perry. Britney Spears was on a couple of episodes of How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame because yeah. Mean Girls was great. <laughs> <laughs> they they were doing the musical film of it. Yeah, they yeah, are because they're getting the guy who played the head teacher. Yes, back. I think we spoke about it on here actually. Yeah, <laughs> he was in something that we talked about. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Um, and the one of the girls from um, the new Spider Man films is going to be Lindsay Lohan's character. Uh, you know the one who does the. TV reporting for the school. Yes. Um, Betty. Betty. Betty Rock? No. Betty. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Betty something. Yeah. Who dates Ned for and a bit. She is, <laughs> um, she is, uh, she's got a Bob in the Raimi films and she's played by Elizabeth whatever. <laughs> she's somebody famous. Banks. In that. Elizabeth Banks. Yes. She's played by Elizabeth Banks in, I think, all three films. Right, but yeah, completely different look to how she looks in in those ones. But yeah, anyway, she's playing KD in the new one. Fair enough. So yeah, um, so yeah, Betty's complaining that her dad's hours are being cut, mm. and Lindsay Lohan has like, uh, she's too old. Then Betty like throws a milkshake at her, yeah, and Lindsay Lohan like deep fries her idea book, yeah, <laughs> which is like... a crazy thing to do. I mean, you have to shut down that fryer for the day. Yeah, also probably super dangerous. I mean, yeah, that is going to go up. Paper, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It would have been great to see like an after of it where it was just like battered. Yeah, but we don't yeah, really see it no. again. Um, we get a bit before, but then there's like a huge like food fight. Yeah, it kind of cuts between this and yeah. the other plot, doesn't it? Yeah, it's and a big food fight and then a cop gets called. I, I wasn't sure if it was a cop or just like security. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but they throw him out and Lindsay Lohan's like, your dad's fired. <laughs> like, obviously. Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. good job, Betty and Hilda. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, it's a family dinner. Which I think they're having at the magazine offices because it looked like the exact same place i really i just thought it was the house it looked the same who knows but this where i realized that alexis and daniel are siblings yes and so it's those two the mum and dennis the menace dennis the menace denise denise the menace denise villeneuve the menace <laughs> um and basically like denny villeneuve and daniel have like a fight about yeah well food. he just starts throwing cake around he like throws cake. Oh, no, i think he's like i think daniel's like eat your food first and he's like no i'm eating cake and tries oh, yeah. to take it from him and that's like wrestling he throws the cake and it lands on alexis yeah and she's being quite nice but she's kind of like this is silk or whatever it's not gonna come yeah. out but it's and fine daniel's kind of like thing. go to your room go finish right in june part two <laughs> <laughs> trailer for that came out today I haven't, Did I haven't it? watched it but oh. I saw it on YouTube yeah. I will yeah. be going to cinema to maybe not that. today I saw it on YouTube earlier so. <laughs> yeah. fair enough yeah. um, well listeners won't know any better because they don't know when we recorded exactly this. we did say it was a Friday yeah but that was a week ago for yeah. them <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Denny Villeneuve's locked himself in his room yes and Daniel starts being worried that he's like hit the He's hated and he's yeah, a bad yeah. father. And the mum comes and gives him parental advice. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, like Alexis is also decided to go and downsize Hot Flash magazine. Yeah. And she's like, maybe it could be like an insert to another yeah, magazine. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, and she's like, what, you're going to make my magazine a flyer? Like, I mean, to be fair, like you can get inserts in like Sunday papers that are like pretty chunky little magazines. Yeah, I know it sounds bad compared to a full thing, but also, you know. 
And I think just like kind of makes for sense. these kind of highbrow fashion magazines, being a free insert in a newspaper doesn't yeah. have the same like no true that's true and they they, they said a few times through that um it was the mum's dream to have this like i don't know however long she's been old for whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah since she first got the menopause yeah hot flashes and she's she's upset with alexis because she found out from somebody else i think is the whole thing yeah and she's like you're being silly you're doing wilhelmina's bidding without realizing yeah and then she has a moment like oh no maybe i am yeah and, and i think that's that's that for that isn't it um yeah yeah uh ignacio is like comforting betty and she's like i'm sorry i got you fired yeah She's just like, everything happened today. And she starts complaining about all yeah. the stuff that happened to him. Yeah, and she goes like, oh, I thought I was growing up. And, and he's like, you are growing up now. Yeah, he said, I told you naive. And he's like, growing up is, isn't is making grown up decisions. It's dealing with the decisions you've made. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure. Of? I mean, yeah, you kind of have to have made some mistakes to yeah. learn from them. But, but you could of... just not make the mistakes. Exactly especially right. like, putting all our money into a shit apartment. like that's kind of implying like if you're grown up it means you can make loads of dumb decisions as long as you can do the consequences and it's I like mean, that's kind of, that is kind of true yeah but it's kind of like oh i'm gonna i don't know quit my job and do a thing it's like yeah. are you consequences if, as, if a you're parent, homeless? as a parent <laughs> that's not the best advice especially when yeah. he's worried about her yeah but the but the general message is like you know you didn't do the right thing necessarily but you're making some progress to being yeah. independent or whatever um and she goes and apologizes to Lindsay lohan yeah. she was like look i know i chatted shit about herbie too uh, <laughs> but i understand why you did it the first one was great and <laughs> You wanted that sequel money. Yep. I'm sorry that I said it was bad. Mm. You still got a good filmography. <laughs> and Lindsay Lohan's like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. But she's, uh, but she, she's, Betty's still upset about what happened at school. Yeah. But then and, Lindsay kind of goes into how she's jealous of her. She's got like an apartment and a job and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And it's like, it's all stuff she got like this episode, Lindsay. If yeah. you watched last season, and there, there was quite a funny bit where she was like, and I'm tired all the time. And I looked up the symptoms and I think I've got Lyme disease. <laughs> yeah. She's like, don't have sex in the grass in this place or whatever. And I was like, like what the fuck? Yeah. It's pretty but funny. Also, like, I, I can't imagine like the assistant to some guy who works at a magazine. Yeah. Is any more prestigious than like I, I being mean, the manager of like a fast on, food place? On paper, it is because it's more like oh, uh, you know, goals or whatever. You can stuff. work your but way like, up. But money wise, they're probably, yeah, yeah. I know which job I'd prefer to do. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't. I don't think I'd last very long working in a fashion <laughs> magazine. They, see, they should do that instead of doing <laughs> ugly Betty. Do just a guy who doesn't <laughs> doesn't care or know much about fashion. Ugly just... basement boy <laughs> <laughs> in Prada <laughs> in, I, in is, Paris. <laughs> isn't that kind of what's the um, Robert De Niro film with Anne Hathaway where he becomes uh, the intern? Yeah, is that he what becomes, that's about? He's like 16, becomes her intern at, at some fashion thing. Is she the devil in this version of it? No, she's, I think, she, yeah, she's the devil, but I think <laughs> she's like really quite lovely and he's just oh, like. So she's not, so she's God. But then. she's like the, that kind of character. She's in charge, I think. She's the God. And of he's fashion. just like really sweet and ends up being a really good intern, even though he's like an ancient old man. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a bad idea for him. <laughs> By the yeah. time he gets one rung up, he's going to be dead. <laughs> But I think it's what he always wanted to do. Fair enough. Yeah, I haven't seen the. Int- I think I've. I think <laughs> you I've, haven't seen this. I think I've seen it, but not in a long time. Fair, well, yeah, I didn't expect you to watch it recently. <laughs> to be honest, I think I saw a clip of it on TikTok recently. That was why it's fresh in the you mind. You watched the whole film on TikTok, did you? I sometimes do that. <laughs> what did I watch recently? I don't know. I've watched. You watched. Um... Philadelphia. Oh, I watched Philadelphia. You it yeah, on here. I, so I've seen yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of um, Shawshank Redemption clips recently as I well. I don't get any. I mean, I don't really go on TikTok enough, but yeah. I, I've never seen one of these before. I think it's because I've seen a few and yeah. I've watched them. Yeah. Um, but uh, basically, Betty gives advice to Lindsay Lohan. She's like, yeah. "Look, stick with what you know." Maybe do more like Mean Girl stuff. Maybe cut yeah. back with your wild party lifestyle. Maybe have a cameo in the new musical version of Mean Girls if they'll let you. Yeah. And she's like, have like a short run on a program like the Mindy Project or something similar to that. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. And she's like, thanks for the advice. I'll give Ignacio his job back because he's literally my best worker. Exactly. She's like, he actually is the best one. 
Yeah. Uh, Delhi Villeneuve comes out of his room, yeah. having finished June part two. Yeah. And he says, sorry, in French. <laughs> I was yeah. going to do a really bad French accent then, but I thought Just be Desolé, I think it is. Yeah. And uh, Daniel says, like, uh, I love you and I'm going to be mean times at times. But yeah. Yeah. And every now and then he says one word in French because he said earlier in the episode he's trying to learn French. Yeah. So the yeah. kid heard three words and kind of got the gist yeah. of it, I imagine. Yeah. But he's like, if uh, if June part two is bad, you better never come out of that room because <laughs> I'll have some words for you. Yeah, I, I think, what I think he's that's gonna what he do says. after that. Oh. Well, he can do whatever he wants, really, can't he? Yeah, I mean, hopefully something else, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's going to do June part three. But well, we, we never know. We didn't know there was going to be part two until we fucking sat Yeah, down. I mean, there might be another book as well. That, I mean, there is another book. <laughs> they might do another they June might, book. <laughs> they might start doing the second book. I think he'll definitely do something in between. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's what I mean next. Yeah, yeah, yeah what yeah. would he do? Oh, I mean... Uh, arrival 2, Departure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else has he done? <laughs> yeah, what else has he done? Oh, he uh, did uh, Blade Runner, so he could do the next one of that. Oh, Blade Runner 2086. <laughs> 2050. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. If you go the same amount of uh, of time as afterwards. But you've got to get old do, Harrison Ford back. <laughs> he could do Enemy 2, Friend. <laughs> It's just called Enemy, the Friend. first one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could do uh, Prisoners 2. Free people. <laughs> uh, on, what, what, see what else you got? What about? I haven't got the list in front of me. What about uh, next floor to <laughs> previous floor? These <laughs> are getting worse and worse. Uh, Incendies too. What would that one be called, Lewis? <laughs> what was it? Incendies. Incendies too. <laughs> Incend freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Just skipping straight ahead. Uh, yeah. What about Polytechnique too? Um, <laughs> Polytechnique too. Technique to poly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, I think that's all his films there. So yeah, I've not seen most of them. So no, no, I wasn't aware of most of those. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. I oh, think what about Sicario two? They already made that. What about Sicario three? <laughs> Sicario three. <laughs> yeah, no, surely that's the thirtieth one. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, we're nearly at the end of this <laughs> this show. <laughs> There's a French film here which has a very long name, so we're just gonna we'll we'll, we'll keep moving. Shall we? <laughs> okay. Um, um, the the video of Betty question her bike has gone like viral yeah yeah and Daniel's like look guys don't well no be I don't think it's gone viral yet but they're all loving it in the office oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's like look don't be idiots and Betty's like actually it's quite funny yeah and it would really appeal to like the target audience of eighteen to thirty nine year old idiots yeah. which this magazine and is targeted like, at that is us Woo. yeah. And it's like, if you think your target audience are idiots, you're generally not going to do particularly well. No, hear, well, I don't know about that. Did you hear the thing about ITV recently? <laughs> no, I didn't. Which, oh, which thing is the, is the question? So there. it was, it turned, I think there was a talk in the House of Commons, uh, which they had in the ITV offices, a certain nickname for people who watch oh, um, a lot of their shows. Um, I'm just trying to find it now because <laughs> like they got questioned on it in Parliament or at a hearing, and yeah. they're like, "No, no." Like, what does this mean? Yeah, apparently uh, they call like daytime viewers of ITV Tower Block Tracys. Oh, <laughs> bloody hell! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't do that. But um, yeah, they're gonna release this video. Yeah, Betty be suggests putting it online, and then she's getting the dog noises now because she is cool or hot or she's on the know. she's on the right side of this yeah. spectrum. Apparently, um, she gets home and there's somebody in her apartment. Yeah, and so she in... gets her like whistle and her spray out or whatever, or she's gonna hit them with something. Yeah, and they go in and it's all her family cleaning it up, and it's like. Yeah. Cool. And did, did they have keys or is it that easy to break into her apartment? I don't know. <laughs> Betty and Hilda like makeup and I didn't realise they had any makeup to do. I think because she kind of tried to grab the phone from her with the whole telling the dad thing, mm. but they'd had 
conversation since. And then really Betty's work. like, your boyfriend's amazing. He's the perfect guy. Is there anything wrong with him? Nope, good. And then walks <laughs> yeah, off. She doesn't <laughs> give her a chance. Yeah, that's a story for next episode, I imagine. Yeah, uh, we see the mode Times Square billboards. Yes. I it, always... <sighs> they're like obviously standing on a green screen, the two that are yeah. looking at it. Definitely Do you reckon like there. all like paying to get your thing shown in Times Square mm. is like really overpriced? Yeah. Yeah. Because like I'm not sure how effective billboards even are in this day and I mean, age. It, I think Times Square compared to other places, you'd get a lot of photos with it in. Yeah. And videos and tourists. So you're getting a more like, global thing. I've I've must have seen plenty of pictures of Times Square and I can't can't remember you a know single what? The word, only but... one I can think of is from I Am Legend. So it's a fake billboard. Is that the Batman vs Superman? It's the Batman v Superman one yeah. because it was prior, like way before ba- yeah. a Batman v Superman film. Yeah, don't none of them stick in my mind. And in Spider Verse, there are like the alternate reality ones from Dust Till Sean. So yes. it's only fake ones. <laughs> fake ones in films. Um, yeah, but Betty's like ticking off her list, and she's like. Got more responsibility. I've got a new kind apartment. Of, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the neighbors ne- being loud again. And I, I, I turned to Christine <laughs> and I was like, I bet he's hot. Yeah. Guarantee he's hot. Yeah. Because yeah. she goes around to complain. She's ready. He like, opens oh. the door and it's a young, attractive guy. He kind of looks a bit like a uh, Pete Doherty before yeah. he kind of looked unhealthy kind of vibes. <laughs> yeah. I was he, half expecting him to be British as well. Kind of like, you know, yeah, classic cool. British vibes. But he apologized for being loud. He's like, I'm in a band and I'm practicing. And, and she's, she's like, like, oh, it's cool. It's fine. And he returns like her necklace that she lost in the way so she never replaced the dove with her classic B. Her classic B. Which she always wears. And he's like, what does it stand for, by the way? And she's like, Betty. And he says, oh, I'm... Jesse. Jesse. I didn't write it down. Yeah. I feel like Jesse seems to be such a common name in like young guys. Yeah. In like American TV shows. Yeah, yeah. For me, growing up, Jesse was always a girl's name. Yeah, same. Yeah. It's not a... Um, probably is more so now with younger people. And young yeah. Kids. Like kids who are zero to... 10 it's probably more popular because of stuff yeah, like this but growing up it was always like short for jessica yeah, or something yeah because yeah. often it's spelt with uh sse isn't it when it's american yeah boy, boy spelling jesse yeah jesse, yeah i don't know if it is there a long version of it jesse <laughs> jesse's girl <laughs> oh, that's the full version yes. <laughs> um, mr jesse's girl Santiago. Yeah. <laughs> but she goes back and he's playing really loudly again, but now she knows he's hot. Yeah. And she's shallow. She and now enjoys the music. To be fair, it is actually now a song rather than just random shredding of guitar. Yeah. But yeah, she has like a very kind of sitcom y, uh, rom com y moment of dancing to herself. Yeah. Which is like, lovely apartment, which is again still obviously the apartment from before. Yeah. Because it's the same, because she painted it the same as the one downstairs, which is. I think fine. she's actually painted it orange. Not yet. I don't know about that. We'll have to watch it again to find <laughs> out. I'm not going to watch it again. But that's the end of the episode. Woo, finally. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't good. No, I think we talked about it for almost the exact amount of time of the episode as well. Really? It's like a commentary. <laughs> almost, like give or take 10 minutes. So we better do less than 10 minutes now and then we'll be good. I mean, there was a few bits we went slightly off tangent once that's or twice. That's yeah. <laughs> once or twice. Yeah. Because if only all, the podcast is all those tangents, then <laughs> we'd be the most popular podcast in the world. <laughs> and I do see Just need like to find a way to distill those parts out. And... I do see clips on TikTok of of podcasts, and mm. I think a lot of podcasts are just tangents. I've constant. seen a lot of people saying that a lot of those video clip ones, it's just them filming lots of I clips. I think we had a conversation about We might have about talked this. about it, yeah. yeah. And it's just them filming lots of clips and then like, putting those the up. The podcast doesn't exist. It's just yeah. two guys who yeah. film themselves, have a conversation yeah. and pretend it's a podcast. Yeah, with. you just film and you, it, so that's almost scripted, at least the start of it scripted to yeah. get you into a little riff there. What yeah. bastards. Do it properly. Yeah, you have to have all this like inane banter in between. You have to find something really even shit to talk about yeah, yeah. to get to those tangents and then you have to listen back over it find all the funny moments and then to listen put them to them yourself on TikTok. Oh, then edit those out and you put them on the tiktok yeah and I also i very rarely put the tangent conversations on tiktok maybe i should just yeah. start doing that i think that's what we used to do 
Yeah. Like, well, not always. Depends, depends on what we're talking about. Yeah, sometimes yeah. there's nothing worthwhile talking about. When there was nothing worthwhile, that's when the tangents would yeah. come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hence why there's lots of tangents in this episode, because this was not good. I, I thought it was fine, honestly. I, like, I, It was all right. It was a little offensive. <laughs> it was a little offensive, yeah. I, I, yeah, that... It was fine. It was exactly what I expected. I I obviously seen. I expected it to be shorter. <laughs> Apart from that, Mindy Project was twenty one minutes, twenty two minutes. So I was hoping for that. This was double. Yeah. That, I think. I think. Yeah, it was fine. Like you said, it was a, it was a good episode in a way to watch because it was the start of a season. <laughs> yeah. But that also meant that it was a lot of introducing stuff for the remainder of the season, which was a bit like, oh, how much of this is going to pay off? The answer is about half of it really yeah like it was fine the co- i think the cast are pretty good in general they're like archetypes and that but they were memorable they're like yeah i think the people. family were quite fun particularly yeah. like ignacio yeah and we didn't mention a younger brother yes whose name i don't know i have no idea he's very like flamboyant he yeah. loves fashion as well he does a little embroidery on the back of the or a bedazzling thing on yeah. the cap he's oh. like he's a he's the camp little I gay saw brother i think um no it's not the trivia um that the silvio horta they create the show is openly gay mm. and when people asked about whether the younger brother is gay he was like he didn't want to write him immediately as gay but wanted to have that growth and realization right, okay, that he's yeah. gay as the series progresses okay, cool, yeah. so he kind of wrote him like that so i don't know if he's gay at this, gay point, this point but yeah, he's very yeah. kind of camp and flamboyant yeah, yeah, anyway yeah, yeah um so i've got a couple of bits of trivia unless yes. you've got anything else to no, say no 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 that about how this was an ugly show. Oh. Um, so I mentioned it was adapted from a Colombian show. Uh, mm. This was the first episode since the pilot to be filmed in New York City. Oh, really? Just that apartment, the outside the apartment. Though, yeah, I guess, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Times Square. It didn't look like it. Maybe but... they weren't there, but they might have filmed Times That's Square. True. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that might have been an original Times Square. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then. The the fun of it of trivia. <laughs> okay. uh, Silvio Horta revealed in an interview that it was entirely the network's decision to hire Lindsay Lohan on the show ah. against Horta's own wishes. Lohan was so difficult to work with that even though she had signed up for six episodes in season three, her character was written out after three. Oh. <laughs> So I guess they were going to have her consistently be Ignacio's boss. Yeah, yeah. And Sylvia Horta did not get on with Lindsay Lohan. Fair enough. So wrote her out the show. Quick little onset writing, which you couldn't do in this climate. <laughs> <would you? laughs> yeah. Well, this, this was 2008, so you just about got in there in time. I mean, when was it filmed? Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. Just, just in time. Ooh. Before he was forced to work it's with one Lindsay of those Lohan. biker chicks was just going past outside. It gave <laughs> yeah. me a fright. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's yeah, quite funny. Yeah. That's pretty good. And this yeah, is yeah. what like 2008. So this is at the time when Lindsay yeah. Lohan was really starting to struggle with her mental health and, yeah, yeah. and stuff. So yeah, I imagine that tied into it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> it's also <laughs> kind of funny that like. He didn't have any say in this. They in the yeah. studio were just like, "We've got Lindsay Lohan. Especially She's going to be third in your show." Season, you'd think that you'd have a bit more creative yeah. control, but I guess to a to a point, maybe it was somebody else that was written in for that role, just the generic, you know, yeah. actress or upcoming actress or whatever. And they were like, "Hey, this would be perfect for Lindsay Lohan." <laughs> maybe someone owed the Lohan family a favor, and they were like, "This is to get her yeah. back on the." Or maybe the networks were like, "We haven't got huge, huge stars in this. Lindsay Lohan's yeah, more famous yeah. than anyone we've got." So draw we've got a chance to three, get her yeah. in. Here. Maybe ratings are dipped, or yeah. There's, I imagine there's... like the trailers would have had Lindsay Lohan all over them and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Series but, regular. But yeah, that is uh, that's before we do our ratings. Yes. What did we learn about the Manhattan Project from this episode? Um, I don't think they even mentioned Manhattan. They mentioned that she wants to get an apartment in Manhattan. So it's right. We didn't. I don't think we learned any more than King of Queens. Um, oh, that's a shame. So uh, we learned that you might get ripped off if you get an apartment there. Yep. Uh, we learned that despite the Manhattan Project and everything that went on in the 40s, ah. 60 years later, there's a thriving magazine industry in the same city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and 
burgers just down the road. Yeah. So yeah. whatever happened in this Manhattan project, it can't have left too lasting an effect on the world. Yeah. You'd yeah, think. Because exactly. otherwise, you know, they wouldn't have burgers and magazines still, would they? I think that's a fair conclusion. I, I think I think that's pretty good. And Lindsay Lohan as well, the, the biggest thing of them all. <laughs> Bigger than burgers or fashion magazines. Bigger than Oppenheimer and whatever he may have created. <laughs> Maybe burgers and fashion and Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> wow, I can't wait to find out next week. <laughs> I can't remember what we're doing next week. No, but... We might actually find out a bit next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but what rating do you want to give this? Uh, I'm just going to go for right down the middle, five. Cool, I'm going to give it a three. <laughs> It was. I disliked yeah. it more than I was. Indifferent yeah, yeah. To I it. was very indifferent. I was more. I'll be honest. Just getting through it. Yeah. I was like, there's bits. If I'd sat down and watched that, if that was on the TV, I would have enjoyed it more than making notes. I, was... probably, I think I made more notes than you because I had. I feel like I did <laughs> just based on how we went through it. I was like, thank God you're moving through this. <laughs> yeah, I did. There was a bit. I can't remember what it was that I, I paused and kind of had a mini rant at Christina about <laughs> what we were watching. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what it was, but it was well, I, probably hoping, one of the offensive things. Probably, yeah, yeah. Well, um, next week is something, if if things go to plan, is something completely different. So hopefully we'll have a positive experience with that one. Cool. I will find out what that is and <laughs> shortly. <laughs> In the meantime, it is now time for Personal, Personal Project. We are very much alike, you and I. I and you. Us. Except for a sense of honour and decency and, and a moral centre. And personal... Project. So, Sam, what have you been watching, reading, creating, or... Pole vaulting. <laughs> well, you saw me pole vaulting earlier, so you know just how much I've been pole vaulting. <laughs> um, in between my pole vaulting... How do people even get into pole vaulting? Like, what? Pole <laughs> like, vaulting. The, the really beginner level is still, like, fucking insane, surely. I mean, you do it at school, I guess. Like, you run with a pole and then fling yourself up in the air. Yeah. Like... How would you even start doing that? I think that? you probably get started with the high jump at school. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I want to do an even higher jump than this. You get into pole vaulting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> starts looking at the sky. <laughs> there was a fly or something. A pole vaulting fly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pole vaulting. Oh, pole vaulting it is. Yeah. Uh, pole vaulting, uh, yes. But no, um, as you know from, uh, from last week's episode, in between pole vaulting, I've been watching Charlie Brooker's Black Mirror. Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> did I... Did I do the joke last week <laughs> did you do it now i can't remember <laughs> did i say like and i did you said what charlie brooker thing have you been watching yes, yeah yes, yes, you, did. <laughs> you didn't do it this time though it, it just came to my head and i was yeah. like oh that'd be a fun bit but yeah, I, yeah, I thought really that's know. what you were gonna do but um yeah. i'm gonna quickly look at the episodes because i've also watched yes um charlie brooker's black mirror <laughs> yeah <laughs> and red mirror as well Red Mirror. Mm. Last episode was announced as Red Mirror when it shows up on the screen. Oh, yeah, it was. Yes. So, so I'm just getting the episode. Let's talk about the first the episode. episode was Joan is Awful. Yeah, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was very I good. I think it might be my favorite of the series. I think it could of be. Of this series. Yeah, I think it could be. It was a very um, strong start. Yeah, I liked how it was just like how the whole premise was just yeah. kind of silly. You get like the one day and then it's just the dramatized version of it. Salma Hayek, and it, who's great in this. Yeah. And, and she turns off, you're like, you're shitted in the church. Even just the fact that that first episode is unfolding in real time with the conversation with the fiance and everything. And it's like, no one's questioning why it's happening at the same time. Yeah. That's the, I'm like, what the hell is going on? But yeah, the fact it evolves and then the show within the show and it's Kate Blanchett on the screen we you never yeah, really see it, was it great it's and just... then i love the twist at the end that annie murphy was annie murphy yes, yeah and it's the layers, with the layers with the michael sarah and it's like i'm michael sarah obviously <laughs> this is like yeah when he came on i was like oh no it's michael yeah, sarah yeah. and then he's like i'm michael sarah <laughs> that was good yeah it, it it did get a bit like silly and kind of inceptiony at the end but it's like 
it's Black Mirror. Like it was, it was mo- it, something being revealed to be in a simulation is the classic Black Mirror yeah. move. So I wasn't and surprised. I was or, thinking at the end, you know. like, so even when we see the real Joan, yes, she's still yeah. being played by an actress yeah. for the TV show. <laughs> Where's it going? Yeah. So there might be an actual Joan out there somewhere. I did think it was a bit stupid. Like, I guess this is the whole like anti Netflix, anti AI creation thing of like everyone wants to see a show about themselves, but it's like they don't want to see that show. It's just free content, right? Is the yeah. idea. Because the fact they were going to do it about every person who subscribed or like, you know, a big handful is like. But I, I, I like the like at the start, like she is a bit awful. She's yeah. not the worst. But then with the twist, it's like because everything's amplified. Like yeah. the Sam Hayek stuff yeah, is amplified yeah. version. Yeah. So it's like, oh, actually, the Annie Murphy stuff was also amplified, amplified. Yeah, yeah. to the real Joe. Yeah. yeah so like, the original thing, like with the ex boyfriend at the thing, might not have even been anything like that at all. Yeah. She might have not even met him. You As know, it me might and Christine have been, were saying like yeah. she might have met him, but like they def- didn't kiss or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. And then for the Annie Murphy one, they made it kiss, and then for Selma Hayek, it's a passionate kiss. Yeah, yeah. Kate Blanchett probably slept with him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I did like when she goes to sleep with him because she's like really upset about everything, and he's like, "It's too public. Like, I can't do it because." <laughs> and he has the whole thing of like, "If I can't get up for Selma Hayek, then what's going on?" <laughs> because that is actually Ben Barnes, isn't it? Who is yeah. the thing that we spoke about earlier? Funnily, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, that was that was a good episode. The next one was Lock Henry, which I yes. also thought was great. Very good. That was very kind of classic classic non-tech black yeah. mirror where it's just like a horrible story basically yeah i mean christina trying to figure out like the twist we were like the dad was probably involved yeah, yeah. To and then when it's revealed the mum was as well yeah, it was yeah, like because yeah. we see an evolution of her character from being like kind of meek mum to being like they frame it as her being the ominous mum kind of yeah thing. whereas she doesn't really change her performance too much it's just the the framing and everything and like especially from the girlfriend's point of view of being like out of place and worrying she's going to upset her to being yeah. worried from her, for her life. Like, and it, it was had, uh, what's his face in it? John Hanna. John Hanna, he's, he's always very good. And, like... and Podrick was the guy from... Oh, yeah. Of course it was. Yeah, yeah. He was great. He I was thought really he, he, he was really That fun. whole angle of like the the tourism going down and them using this true crime as a tourism thing was quite interesting yeah especially like they talk about like drone shots of beautiful places and stuff and that's so i have not seen that much true crime but a lot of it to fill in the gaps of what they don't have they do just show like the the lovely yeah. area and, like how could something so horrible happen in this lovely town but yeah I, that was a good episode and as it developed i was like yeah yeah this and is... it has the classic kind of bleak ending of like he got everything he wanted but he lost everything At what he loved. Cost? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah i half expected him to like hang himself yeah, or that's something what at, I the thought was gonna happen at the end and even there's a reference to the lock emery thing in that first episode it's yeah one of the things. i think it's been broken down plenty of times. A lot of those Streamberry things are references to previous episodes. Or later episodes, or in, later the, episodes yeah. in the series. The yeah. next one was Beyond the Sea, yeah. which so is, is Aaron Paul one, which I know yeah. everyone's been raving about. Right, really? Okay. Um, yeah. I yeah, I wasn't sure. This is I, the one that I said last week. It's an hour and 20. I don't think it needs to yeah, be that that's, long. That's what me and Christine said. It could have been half that length. Yeah. Easy. Most of these were about 40, 50 minutes. Yeah. It have been that. And like yeah, Aaron yeah. Paul's good. But I also felt that like... Like it was quite predictable. Like after yeah. after the other guys, that family, bit was quite cool. The Manson murders kind of thing. Yeah. Is that was that a Colkin that was doing that? It, it was looked, a Colkin. Like yeah. um, I can't remember not which Colkin. Ke- not Kieran and not Macaulay. Not Macaulay. The other one. Yeah. Um, they all look very similar. Yeah. <laughs> How quickly did you kind of peg what was going on? Oh, did so like get... after those murders, when they went back and he was going back oh, to Oh yeah, business. I mean, I'll, no, but I mean even the replicant thing because you don't get that oh, revealed. Yeah, so there's no, a bit of the cinema where the, the teens are like, oh, you look so real. And I, I was like, ro- I was like robot astronaut husband <laughs> yeah because they said like oh you're up there yeah. i thought maybe maybe he's aaron paul i thought for right, a second okay, i thought yeah. also maybe they're dead yes sort of thing yeah, like yeah, yeah. like they did with the episode of donald gleason yes, yeah 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 maybe do that again yeah. but yeah that stuff was interesting and it was interesting yeah. up until the murders and then after that once they kind of settled mm. down me and Christina were like, what's going to happen here is he's going to use Aaron Paul's replicant. Yeah. Something's going to happen. I with... thought it was going to be a relationship with the wife. Because yeah. That was, was like, the, that was the obvious. Kind he's of either going to have a positive or a negative relationship mm. with Kate Mara. Yeah. And then something bad is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And so as it kind of played out, it was kind yeah. of, cause it's quite, it's quite slowly drawn out. And it's mm. just kind of like waiting for these things yeah, to happen. I feel like it had a lot of potential that it didn't fully 
make use of. Like we had some nice moments. Like Aaron Paul was kind of like flat throughout most of it, like intentionally. Yeah. When he got to play the dual role, that was interesting because he did a bit of a different, like deeper voice and yeah. he was being a bit sexy and all that. And then when he gets emotional towards the yeah, end. Yeah, that was his performance was good. Kate Mara was fine. Like she's normally she didn't really, good, have, much she didn't really have much to do. I think if the, if if they cut out a lot of time between mm. uh the mur- the fact the the family murder yeah. and like an instant between yeah. the friend and Kate Marla. Yeah, yeah. Cut out like 20 minutes between yeah, that. Yeah. It would have made it better for me. I think me. they could have skipped to them making the decision to let him use his body quicker. Because yeah. that's about 25 minutes, it felt like. Yeah, you know? which yeah. was like quite obvious from... And the whole the like one. ending thing of him just for some reason just being like, oh, I'm just going to kill your family too. It was a bit like, okay. Like I know he'd yeah. gone mad in space. And I did like that reveal that like he's going to have to be up there for four years. Yeah. And the whole point of the swapping thing was like the, in- the initial thing was so that they could live normal lives and not go mad in space. But it's like yeah. maybe Aaron Paul should have just gone up and spent more time with him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I kind of wish we'd seen a bit at the end of like what happens to the replicant. Yeah. Well, I because think the... if police turn up, they've been like, well, you've murdered. And like only yeah. only that family and Aaron Paul know no, that, that he's been using yeah, it. Yeah, because it's not a proper alibi really, is it? Yeah. So yeah. you can't just say like, it wasn't me. probably could have done some technology things or whatever. But, but... Yeah, it would have been interesting to see if he'd yeah. been... I also think they should have because they mentioned like once, maybe twice, that it was a two-man ship that needed them both to run it to survive. Yeah. I think if they'd laid that on a bit thicker, that kind of stalemate at the end would have been more impactful of like, I can't kill you in space because I'll die in yeah. real life in space. But then at that point, if his family are dead, he's got nothing to lose. So they probably just killed each other. That's what I, I was thinking as well. Like it would be interesting to see like a follow on of like when they're getting back to earth, mm. neither of them have anything to live for. Yeah. One of them's murdered the other one's family. Like yeah. at that point, maybe murder. Cause also Aaron Paul might be going yeah. back now and he's going to spend the, lef- the rest of his life in prison. So well, yeah, exactly. So I feel mm. like the, the, the way we're supposed to feel was like, he can't kill him because, and that's why they didn't kill him earlier when he was yeah. upset because they need to survive together, but they don't have anything to live for either of them. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, I like the concept. I just think it was a bit messy. The next one was Maisie Day. Yeah. Uh, with Zazie Beats. I really enjoyed this episode. Yeah. Because for a lot of it, you're like, fucking paparazzi are the worst. Yes. And it's set in that kind of, we spoke about Lindsay Lohan earlier. It's 2005 or something. Yeah. So it's around that Britney and era. part of me, just like how they tried to make Zazie Beats more of a likable character by having the really bad paparazzi there, yeah, but it's also like, like the pervy she's, guys. She's yeah, also yeah. like just as bad. Yeah, she's the most. Yeah, yeah. I did not see the twist coming from this. No, I all. didn't. I, I, you kind of the, when it's leading up to it, and they've bought out the lodge for the nut for the weekend, yeah. or whatever, and it's like there's something going on. When she was chained to the bed, I was kind of my first thought was like. Is she I wolf? I didn't twig until yeah, she started. I did until think, she like looked. But at the I moon. kind of thought like that's not what this show is because yeah. it isn't normally. And it what seemed this like show quite is. a grounded episode. Yeah. So you won't. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah, she looks at the moon. She's changed. There's like a goat and or yeah, something in yeah. there. When you see that, it's like okay, yeah. And then it's just like a kind of bloodbath, which ends up in the diner from before. Yeah, I know. I really like the final bit where yeah. like she's gives her the gun she's going to shoot herself and she just like slowly pulls up the camera yeah, and it's like yeah because yeah, paparazzi are the worst yeah 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 also there'd be massive moral questions about that but i guess that's yeah. the whole thing is that it's an exaggeration of that yeah i thought it was fun what did you think about the kind of departure from the tech world and more into the... I, th- I think it's it's yeah. fine like, it doesn't need to be a tech thing no, it's, no. it was still an interesting story I, that was like a critical look on exactly. the world we live in i think charlie brooker originally said you know a couple of years ago you know first third first, second third season whatever that he wanted to do more of a kind of twilight zone thing and yeah. it just fell into the tech thing a little bit like, more it's not always like the first episode yeah. the national anthem isn't tech at all it's no, it's no. more like this of like it's dark yeah. and also a critique of hum- how we yeah. live as a society yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's a little normally a little very slight twist on it which normally is something slightly tech based but then we go into demon 79 which it does come up saying red mirror presents instead of black mirror so and it pretends to be a bit of a horror yeah i really enjoyed this episode i thought it was an interesting setting setting it in like 1979 with 
rampant racism yeah, and stuff yeah, and having the national an Indian, next door an Indian woman as the main yeah, character. Yeah. I like the little cuts where she's like killing people yeah, is like yeah. a vision. Like the... Which kind of implies almost like how much of this is real even. Like yeah. did she just like hit herself or whatever and have these whole visions? Yeah, or that she has got a dark side to her. Well, exactly, yeah. Previous um, and that. then Papa Rossido from the Lazarus Project yeah, comes in yeah. and he's fucking brilliant. Did he's... you like the like, whole Boney M thing when they have him on screen initially? <laughs> yeah, he's playing when, the, the... when I saw that, I was like, that was Papa Rossido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, when the demon appears, yeah. I was kind of waiting for him to turn into... Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's fun he's very good, this episode. Isn't he? He's having so much fun. Like, he's such a nice, like, mix of kind of mischievous and kind of there's a bit of an evil side to him yeah it, it kind of reminded me a bit of david tennant's character in good omens yeah, where like yeah, he's also yeah. a demon but yeah. it's just kind of like he kind of seems like he's on your side but how much of that is him being a demon kind of yeah thing? yeah it was cool and the i can't remember the name of the actor who plays like the police detective he was very good in it as well i've seen him in yes a couple yeah. other things before. um but yeah it's just a fun episode and obviously she kills the first guy because he's like oh yeah he's he's like a pedo touches yeah, his daughter yeah, yeah, and yeah. i like the whole thing of like being able to see into yeah. the future and obviously we get the bit with the politician that yes turns... and that's one that's something that it has lots of easter eggs for other black mirror stuff because apparently there are other episodes in this season that mention his political career so in those right. other worlds he did carry on because obviously in the end of this episode the apocalypse happens yeah nuclear strikes and all that which i thought was a really fun little i like bit the, of the as the top as the clock was ticking and kind of nothing happened yeah, it was like yeah. oh maybe she was just crazy yeah and then it's like oh actually no there's yeah there's a nuclear incident and it's just all the police just standing there like fuck kind of thing it was almost hey. like the kind of fight club with buildings coming down thing it's yeah a little bit like that kind of yeah but yeah it's good i like the uh the kind of action chase at the end when she's hunting down this politician and then yeah, she doesn't yeah. quite get to him and you're like Oh fuck! You're like, is that for the best or or not? Yeah. yeah. And there's the moment where he's talking to the other girl in the shop, and he's got like this real kind of evil malevolence yeah. to him, and you're like, no, there's there's something wrong with this guy. Oh, yeah. When we see the flashes forward, I don't know if you remember the episode with like the robot like dog that's chasing the woman yes. around. It flashes one of them and says, "New oh, police yeah, dogs no, being I, introduced." You so remember seeing that? Having a little look afterwards, uh, a lot of the future or like modern based plots have little links to him so it's almost that all the ones that are set in the same world a lot of it stems from this guy fucking up the uk and the world kind of thing yeah so, that, that's fun so she could have saved everyone and yeah. stopped black mirror basically but, yeah. <laughs> i like as well the twist where where she kind of accidentally kills the murderer's yes, brother yeah and then he's like no murderers don't kill it's a good job you actually yeah, killed that second yeah. guy because that's funny he's almost like on the phone to the the lot downstairs like oh this is what's happening kind of thing like yeah. he's his, it's his first job so he doesn't fully know the rules and that yeah it was cool and also the the symbol that's on the um domino thing yeah is something that's been in black mirror a few times it's in bandersnatch it was in white bear do you remember when yes. the woman's yeah. yeah there's a couple of little motifs and stuff but i think the idea of red mirror i don't know if it's something they're going to pursue more but i would love to see a whole season of red mirror where it's all kind of more schlocky horror-y kind of yeah. things i think that even just like three you know this was a really fun episode. it was really fun yeah um yeah. if i had to rank them yes because I why not i'd go number one actually or i think number one probably is actually demon 79 so i think i had most fun watching that yeah yeah even though i watched that in two parts oh did you yeah yeah um yeah. but i think that was so i love that as number one Joni's awful is number two mm. lock henry number three yep Maisie day number four and beyond the sea number five yeah and i think beyond the sea is probably the only one that i didn't think that's a great episode yeah i would it agree, was a yeah. good season i would say pretty similar i'm not sure if i would have Joan is awful as number one just because I think I enjoyed that slightly more and it was more it was a really good introduction to the whole thing I think I probably put that at number one then Demon then Henry then Maisie then yeah. Beyond the Sea yeah, 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 just yeah. Top pretty two similar yeah, yeah. yeah yeah but that was uh it was a yeah. fun season I thought it was really good I, it's the longest Black Mirror season we've had for a while because the last one was only three Plus yeah. Bandersnatch was released a few it's, months it's, before that. It's kind of a shame that Black Mirror is always the classic thing where you get a season like yeah. once every like three or four years yeah. and then you sit and binge it over like a yeah, weekend and then no more Black Mirror for like... So I always think like 
there's episodes I haven't seen yeah. or there's a season that I've missed and they'll go check them like, oh no, I did watch well, yeah, that season. Yeah, I think I said last week, I, I went back and watched the two from the previous season that I hadn't seen before. Yeah. So I had an extra little bit, but <laughs> I think I'd, I'd quite like to watch some of the early ones again. Yeah. I think White Christmas, which is I think of the John end Hamm. of two. Yeah, I've only seen that the one time and I Same. remember really I liking that. I missed that when it first came out. Because I think originally that was a special separate from season yeah. two or maybe even I think that's yeah, why yeah. I missed it. Yeah, yeah. On, the other day I was at the pub talking through like all the episodes and there was yeah, some yeah. that like I don't really remember. Yeah, so, yeah. And some that I was like, oh yeah, that was a fantastic episode. So I quite like to go back and revisit yeah. some bits. I agree. Yeah. But, yeah. It was Black good. Mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a couple more bits to talk about. Do you want to, you got anything particular? Yeah. So I went to the cinema on Tuesday. Uh, I also went to see Indiana Jones, but we'll talk about that on the Silver Screen yes, Project. Yes. Uh, on Tuesday, I went to see Asteroid City. Did you? The okay, new Wes Anderson nice, film. Nice. Um, it? It's, it was great. It's, it's a weird kind of fairly like pointless film yeah they have to know aren't they? very weird and Wes Anderson it's, the premise wasn't quite what I expected because it's it's some people in like a old like 50s or some or 70s right like route 66 type yeah, town yeah, yeah. but it's got the added layer that this is a theater production and it's got bits of like Edward right. Norton writing the script for this and Adrian Brody like directing it and it cuts okay, every now and then okay. to like behind this behind the yeah, stage bit yeah, yeah. and that's, talking about like fun, yeah. what characters are gonna do and then you're like waiting oh. for them to do that kind of thing did you see the french dispatch no no okay yeah interesting because that that it's not quite the same but it's got a framing yeah you know whatever you call it dynamic and like it, it, it comes up constantly like act yeah, one yeah. scenes uh four to six like right, every okay. few <laughs> scenes but like it's star studded cast who yeah, are all I don't great. Yeah, I too much of the. Some cast. people are like Leave Schreiber's in it for two seconds, yeah, I think. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum's in it for two seconds, <laughs> and then like you've got like Jason Schwartzman's great. Sky yeah. Johansson's in it a lot. She's great as she yeah. always is. Yeah. Uh, Steve Carell's great. Um, the kid from Grand Budapest and Spider Man, oh, yeah, 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 plays a fairly similar role as he did in Grand Budapest. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and uh, Jeffrey Wright, like, there's yeah, I like Jeffrey. Wright. Loads yeah, of people, yeah. but it was just a good bit of fun. Oh, cool. And there, there's a couple of bits that really, really got me and made me laugh in in the cinema. That it's just like that's a great like gag. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's, oh, I that's might good. say I, I would like to see it in the cinema. I saw French Dis- Dispatch in the cinema, so. I think they are good ones to watch, especially because yeah. there's often quite a lot going on, like both visually and dialogue and kind yeah. of action wise. So I think being like in the proper cinema experience, even though you don't always catch everything kind of first time, it really kind of yeah, keeps your attention. And like with Wes Anderson's like filming and stuff with all the colours and mm. the symmetry and stuff, yeah. it really adds to it in cinema when you kind of sat there, you you can't look at your phone at any point. Yeah, You're just kind of watching a big thinking, screen. Yeah. What was the film before that? Was it Isle of Dogs? Yeah, I think so. I, so. I never, I never well. got around to seeing that. I think I might have seen... Yeah, I, I better keep the streak up then. Yeah, 2018. So it must have been... Yeah. But, yeah. Last one. Tom Hanks as well was, was good uh, fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's his first film with Wes Anderson. Yeah, I, I think, think it so. Is. I remember hearing about that, yeah. He's got people to... seem to enjoy working with him. He seems like a Yeah, fun guy. He's, he's one of those people that's got like certain people he likes to work with, but that list is just like ever growing. So then you yeah. end up like a film like this that's got yeah, like yeah. loads of big stars in it. You'll often get um, somebody like Willem Dafoe turns up for a very short period in Astro... Um, French Dispatch. So, yeah, yeah um, but I think I think I, I think Bill Murray was originally meant to be in it as well, but oh, okay. COVID. I think he got COVID or something. Uh, so he was replaced by Steve Carell. Right. I As like, actually, I can one hundred percent see Bill Murray in that role. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good fun. So I, I do cool. recommend checking it out if you get the chance. Yeah, nice, nice. What about anything else? Yeah, about? I've seen. Oh, I've seen a film and a series. Uh, take your pick. Let's go with the film. Film. I watched Renfields. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which I know you watched earlier in the year. Yeah. It was good. It was much more action packed than I expected. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I don't think you mentioned that at the time, which I'm quite glad you didn't because it's kind of like when he gets his little superpowers from eating the bugs, he kind of launches <laughs> into kind of matrixy kind of 
over the top like gory action which yeah. I thought was very fun it's, uh, the action's like like you say it's gory in like a silly way so it's yeah. good fun it's quite decent kind of action as well like the the scene that I remember most is in the kind of condo apartments bit where he's kind of leaping between the balconies yeah. and it ends up with the big pile of like <laughs> bodies above the uh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I like the action set piece in like the diner or something yeah that's where, one of the first w- ones yeah where he's yeah. with aquafina and they're doing yeah. their own thing it's he cut like guys yeah. arms off and stuff i think he throws like a serving platter thing and yeah it, like, cuts <laughs> their arms off yeah it's good and i like like nicholas cage is very good i like he's like all withered at first i mean you see the bit where you know however long ago he got in the situation he always tries yeah. to too big for his boots and <laughs> has to regress back and all that yeah and he's all like disgusting and he kind of progresses i liked um you mentioned when you talked about it ben schwartz is the kind of at first kind of sniveling bad guy yeah. then he becomes a familiar as well <laughs> i like that scene where he reveals himself as the familiar he like snorts like a centipede off his hand he's <laughs> yeah. like there's something very familiar about you <laughs> <laughs> and then like all the goons are familiars as well so it's like a big action thing yeah, yeah. it was it was good fun it's, yeah it was, it was um, yeah i think it was funnier than i kind of expected as well because it's like there yeah. is just good comedic beats to it yeah i i uh I, it was directed by chris mckay who i looked up after and the uh, most recent thing i recognized was lego batman like i yeah. kind of see some of the comparisons there's a lot of like introspective narration about self-improvement and like having a shit life and all that and that kind <laughs> of is pretty par and par with uh, yeah. lego batman and yeah no i really enjoyed it i also thought it was quite funny how he looked like uh kind of Gerard Way, My Chemical Romance at the start. <laughs> and I was like, his hair's pretty cool. He's got like a little emo thing going on. Yeah. And then when he decides to make himself better, he like combs his hair. And I was like, no, I liked your hair how it was before. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, Renfield, good, good fun. Yeah. Um, as well as that, I watched the whole of the Netflix series, uh, Skull Islands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the uh, animated series that, yeah. that came out uh, last week, I think it was. Is it like a kid's thing is it like so this is what i was trying to so yeah this is exactly my thoughts in the first episode because it's kind of unclear at first because it's a little bit kiddy in terms of like two of the main characters are like teenage boys and there's a teenage girl that comes into it in the first episode and their kind of relationship is a little bit more like a kind of camp cretaceous thing but then there's like blood and people are dying and it's like it gets a little bit like you'll see like a severed arm on the floor kind of thing it's not like too gratuitous like people getting ripped in half but like one of the main characters dies quite graphically well not graphically but quite kind of viciously in the first episode and uh, it does seem to be set within the same Oh, that's cool. World, at least. I don't know really where it works in the timeline because it's modern day, but it's at a time where they haven't like set up a camp there, which I think in the latest one, they had like yeah, a monetary so pre- station. Yeah, Godzilla versus Kong. Potentially, yeah. Or it may be just like an alternate thing. The, the animation, like at first, it reminded me of like... That's what I was just looking at. It kind of looks like Star Wars Resistance. Right, okay. A bit. It's, it reminded me a little bit of like kind of fake slash American anime, like something like Avatar or Legend of Korra. Yeah. Um, or at worst, like a DC animated film, which I always hated the looks of most yeah, of them. But, but in motion, it works really well. Like the, the fluid animation is... The, the animation's fluid. There's some good action in it. We get quite a lot of different um creatures in it as well which is good so when they get to the island which is fairly o- early on in it what are you looking at? <laughs> just looking through the animation <laughs> so. go, <laughs> um yeah there's lots of new creatures in it we get like the re- one or two returning things from the the films but most of it's like new just little yeah. things that are there i told you about when christina first watched skull island oh she'd yeah never seen a king fucking film and yeah, yeah. none of the law and we're in the skull island she's like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, i mean to oh, be yeah. fair i don't think uh kong is introduced until a couple episodes into That's this probably good. so it works quite well there's there's some fun stuff you know without spoiling anything there's there's uh there's something that kong has to fight that is his match in this right which I is mean, a, which is a, a new thing and that's kind of where it builds to um it, you know the the one thing i would say like it doesn't do a great job with scale all the time like 
Kong is always very big, but some of the other creatures, when they're fighting Kong and then they're next to a human, it's kind of a little bit inconsistent. Right, yeah. And the plot like is a little bit basic in terms of like, oh, someone wants to find someone and who are they or they're related to them and all that kind of thing. It's not, it, It's. I'd say it's probably like a teen program, really. Yeah. But it's definitely a little bit more adult than like Camp Cretaceous, like you say. They're, they're 20 minute episodes and there's eight. So it's an easy thing to just put on in between Fair enough. That's um, like other two stuff. Two and a half hours. Yeah. It's, it just, well, as soon as they get there, it just, it just shows that it's like the absolute worst place. Like all the different <laughs> characters are in different places and they're all just having a shit time. Like nice. it's, it, it is pretty good. It was all right. Especially if you, you know, if you like all that stuff, which I know you do, then yeah. It's no, I'll probably, uh, probably check that out. Yeah. I've uh, temporarily got Netflix again because I said uh, I was yeah. traveling. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, that's, that's, I, <laughs> that's why I watch Black Mirror. <laughs> I recently found out that I am now paying £20 a month for Netflix oh, wow. because they upgraded me because I was originally on the plan where three people could watch it at once because yeah. I think my mum and sister were both using it. And if you have more than two at once, you have to be upgraded plus one. And then when they brought this in, they've upped that tier to a higher price. So I can now have another person legally on it. But right. I'm waiting for my mum and sister, who now live together, to ask me for that because I don't want to give it to them if they don't need it. Yeah. But £20 a month, I'm going to have to ask them to spend some money on that, to be honest. Yeah, that's mad. Yeah. But hey, oh, Jesus. Yeah. But no, that's, that's it. I have started watching something else. Oh, I'll just talk about it now. I started watching Titan season four. <laughs> it's really bad. It's really, really bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, it's. it's I, I, season four? Yeah, I, I was surprised three as well. Out. Yeah. Season three was when they did the Red Hood, the whole of the Red Hood in one season. Right. And season two was when Jason Todd was introduced. So that was interesting right, but season one was quite good wasn't it it was it was all right yeah it was all right season see they all feel really disjointed because they like introduce like a main bad guy but then it's monster of the week and then like occasionally it'll be involved and they'll have like two or three episode little arcs and stuff right. and, it, and everyone's constantly like oh i need to find out my new power and like starfire's just got a new power at the start of this and it's like why like she had powers anyway and there's a funny bit with this where it's not supposed to be funny they get a call to go to Metropolis because Superboy is finally going to meet his dad, Super Superman. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's a clone of Superman and Lex Luthor. So he's going to meet right. Superman. And they get there and they go to Star Labs. And then the guy comes up and he's like, I'm so sorry. And he hands him a note. And it's like, I had to go save someone on the other side of the galaxy. <laughs> and then they go into this room and they see a holographic map of the galaxy. And there's this red and blue dot that flies past them. And he's like, is that him? And they're like, yeah, that's him. <laughs> and Dick Grace is like, don't worry. One day you'll get to meet him. <laughs> and I'm like, just fucking, they even went past the statue of Superman at the entrance. Like, it's not that hard to just get, like, it's probably a licensing thing, but like, yeah. Just and... just get a guy to just stand there for a bit or don't talk about it. Yeah. Lex Luthor dies in the first episode as well. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. It's just and also like occasionally someone will just like say fuck and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot this is supposed to be like an adult <laughs> program. It's really fuck Batman. It's really not like, yeah. It's not mm. good. Like it's a slog as well, because it's like 50 minute episodes. Oh. I've watched like two and a half, and like I'm just I'm I'll watch it just to find out what happens, but it's yeah. not. It's not good. It's not good. I uh, I keep meaning to go back and finish Gotham, but I mean Gotham's probably better, I imagine. But I like this because like they are all like just superheroes, even though it's taken them a while to get there. So in theory, it should be a fun little superhero show, but in practice, it's not that at all. Fair enough. Um, I will save what else I've got for next time because yeah. I don't know how much I'm going to have for next time. Yeah. Uh, which means it is the end of the show. Yes. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed it. I know I did and I reckon Sam did as well. Oh, I loved it. So if you did, please give us five stars on your podcast listening application, whether it yeah. be Spotify, iTunes Music, Apple's Music rather, Amazon Music, Google Music, or any other thing that others do exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do that. It's much, much appreciated. Um, if you've got thoughts on Ugly Betty, mm. get in contact with us. Yeah, if you want to answer some of the many questions we had throughout this episode, please send us an email to theprojectprojectpod at gmail.com. If you want to find our social medias, they're in the link tree in the episode description, so you can find out when new episodes are coming out. 
when we're doing silver screen projects or when clips are posted on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it fell a bit behind on the TikTok. Yeah, I did notice, but I didn't want to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. I'm sure all that time in Scotland where you're walking around in the hills, you'll have lots of time for that. Yeah, well, the TikTok fucking goes through your data, so I don't really use it when I've got Wi-Fi. <laughs> I know, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I will, I will catch up, because I think we've had two episodes out <laughs> since. I, I yeah, it's think. all right. It's one of them. But yeah, it will happen. It will happen. You go back and look at the old TikToks. Oh, yeah. We still get, I still get uh, notifications that people like that Lazarus Project TikTok <laughs> from like a year and a half ago. Yeah, not even the good Lazarus Project. No, <laughs> just that one TikTok that goes like semi-viral every now and then. Hashtag Paul Walker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that is the end of the show. So thank you for listening. I will hear you next week. And I'll see you in Manhattan project. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>